Welcome to another edition of the Dementia Care Partner Talk Show. Now, here's dementia care expert Tifa Snow and your host, Greg Phelps. Hello and welcome to the Dementia Care Partners podcast series brought to you by Positive Approach to Care. I'm your host, Greg Phelps, along with Tifa Snow. And our topic today, I'll read the question verbatim. How do we assist direct care staff in understanding and developing the skills needed to effectively support persons living with dementia? you got 30 seconds to answer. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> courses, hands-on. Do they want to learn? Videos, practice. I mean, where do we go with this? Because this uh, almost sounds to me like a cry for help from somebody. It does. It sounds like we have a mountain in front of us and, or a brick wall and we're feeling overwhelmed by how do you do this? How do you get people to do something different? And I hear it. So what I'd say is, first, we have to be curious. And that's the hard part is really staying curious, because what I got to figure out is, is it OK? So where is the challenge? Is it that the person's these individuals are unaware of what happens when people develop dementia? Are they unaware of why what we do matters? Are they unaware? Or are they aware, but they don't really have the knowledge they need to see that what they're seeing is a combination of the dementia, the environment, and how we're doing what we're doing when we're doing it? I mean, and that is a big step from just being aware of dementia and that what I do matters to now I'm bringing in the environment and the time and, and the person's dementia and the task. So now I'm looking for how knowledgeable are they? And then maybe if they are knowledgeable, they get all that, then do they have the skill to do this? Because you can know something and not necessarily be able to do the thing you know. I mean, I know a lot about, oh, let's say soccer but you're not going to see me out in the field kicking a ball or making a goal or making a block or anything else, or even refereeing because I don't have any skill, but I'll yell. I mean, I, I know how to do that. I don't know. To do. <laughs> yeah. I can be a cheerleader or I can be the guy that yells at the rep or yells at the players. And you know, that's not as helpful as you think it is. <laughs> it's just sort of like we're being watched and I don't think they know what they're doing. They're just cheering or they're, they're yelling at us. So that skill development is probably one of the biggest barriers to getting a change in what I would say competence and confidence. So now let's take a step back. So if you can't see the difference between dementia and not dementia because you, you're unaware, then maybe the very first thing you need to do is, is just even look at videos on the content of normal or not normal. And like, how do you know the difference? And then maybe it's starting to look at some of the symptoms of dementia and how can you do something different with those symptoms and just sort of, okay, so people living with dementia have a more and more limited visual field. And then ask the question. So I'll ask you, Greg. So if the person can only see what you can see with binoculars and you had binoculars on and I walked up to the side of you and tried to put a spoon of something in your mouth, what do you think your reaction would be if you had binoculars on and suddenly somebody start, started to put something in your mouth? Well, I'm kind of thinking the next sound you would hear would be the spoon clattering on the floor. <laughs> yeah, you're li liable to react to that. Oh, yeah. So, yep. Yeah, I'm wondering what would happen if the person went way out in front of you and got where the binoculars were looking and went, hey, and then showed you a spoon. Well, then I might be interested. Then you might be interested. So now let's take that new knowledge you have and let's, I'll put you in binoculars and I'll do the two different things we just talked about. And, and now I want you to be me and I'll be the person in binoculars. And then we're going to do it a few times until, now, which one are we going to repeat the most often, do you think, Greg? Which one do we want to repeat most often? Probably that one, you know, the, the getting in front and, and showing uh -huh. people, I need to have the experience. You've yeah. got the experience because you've been doing this for two, three years, haven't you? Yeah. So, yeah. So we want to have them try it out, try it out. It's called drilling until it becomes something that they don't have to think so hard about. And then we wanna put it into their daily practice. So like, okay, let's try it with so-and-so. Oh, with so-and-so, oh, okay. Well, now where are they sitting? Oh yeah, well, I can't get that far in front of them. They're, they're sort of turned toward the wall and it's like, okay. So how would you get their attention? Knock, knock. Hey, 
Okay. And then, so this is where getting it to that place. So Greg, how long do you think this probably takes? Well, any habit takes some time to develop. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking that I'm going to have to work on it more than five minutes today to, oh, to get it to stick in my brain. Yeah. So, but here's the trick. If you do work on it a solid five minutes and you really do focus on it for five minutes, if you do that for six to eight weeks and we stay steady on that, guess what you'll be doing by the end of six to eight weeks? Probably going, hey. You sure and, enough you know, will. And it won't be a, it'll be, hey, if you follow my lead, but you know, you can develop your own word. Now to actually change a community though. Now this gets tricky. Well, you know, know and, and the yeah. one thing that I, I didn't mention was that this question came just before COVID was really acknowledged as having an impact <laughs> on all these facilities. So now we take all of this training and now we've gone into survival mode. Yep. And now somebody is emerging going, oh, I think we can do better. So, you know, it's. Yeah, so we got to get back on the horse mm -hmm. because guess what happened during COVID? They took everything that we had worked on and said, no, 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 no. Just focus on this one thing. We've got to focus on this one thing. Keep them isolated. Keep them isolated. Wear the mask. Don't do this. Do that. Don't do this. Because that emergency learning curve of survival took everything we had worked on really hard in some cases and said, not now, not anywhere. And we focused everything we had on this COVID reaction. And now we're going back and going, Oh, and now we have a lot of people who need help. Um, what were we doing before? And we got to go back. And what I'm going to tell you is if we stay focused and we build this, if we're going to build an entire community that does it, we're talking about two to five years of focused effort. And people don't pay attention that long. But that's what it's going to take. So, that's Tipa, hard. in the old days, you used to travel all over the universe, <laughs> giving courses along with a phalanx of other people and out there doing things you've gone online are you ready to branch out soon i know in canada we're starting to relax some of the restrictions you can have 50 people or more unmasked yeah we're we're looking at it greg but we want to be really careful this delta variant that's that's cropping up uh and these folks who are deciding they don't want to be vaccinated we're really cautious that we don't want them coming together in some fashion bringing it along without symptoms, and then people who would never intend to go share, unfortunately, take it somewhere and share it. And, you know, so this unmasking, masking, CDC is back to saying, ooh, given the Delta variant, we're, we're getting nervous again. We're getting nervous because we haven't hit the numbers we need to hit. So we're trying to be prepared and thinking, are we ready? Are we ready? What I will tell you is I haven't been buying plane tickets quite yet, because just when we think, maybe, maybe, they go, oh, wait a minute. Oh. So we're really sort of still working with folks. Um, we are looking at doing some outdoor events um, where we have greater ability you know, to be separated. And we are looking at really careful coming togethers. Um, but we're being, we are trying to be cautious because we don't want to be the cause of something. Um, On the bright side, you have adapted to doing online. Yeah. We have, and we can help people who are together because they're in a pod, they're in a community and they're they're spending a lot of time together. We can help them while they get together and we can be on our end. We have some groups that are together. Um, so we can do training through this internet thing where we can do together, together, but just not all together yet. And you can break it up into small bites for people? Oh, lots of little bites. We can do little tiny segments, bigger segments, larger chunks, but we currently are not recommending, honestly, if we're doing it online, any more than four hours at a clip, because it turns out it's really hard to pay attention for that long. Um, and so we're looking at, you know, an hour, two hours, three, four, but that's pretty much the max before it's time for a break. Tipa, thank you very much. You are so welcome. You've been listening to the Dementia Care Partners podcast brought to you by Positive Approach to Care. If you'd like more information relating to dementia, look up tipasnow.com.